My name is Gary Schindeldecker. I live in Riverton, and I can already tell you this is going to take longer than five minutes, so you'll have to kick me out or bear with me. Um, well, I appreciate you coming tonight. I have to tell you from the bottom of my heart that your complaint resolution system so far I found completely insincere. From, from day one when you started the project, you rolled in a bulldozer, you made a, a turbine access road directly across from my house. Not beside my house, not down the road from my house. So consumers could save the money from having to move one power pole. What they do for a living, move power poles. So instead of moving one power pole at a great expense on a $255 million project to consumers energy, you built an access road immediately across the road from my home. You brought in a bulldozer that was half the size of this room and compactors and started vibrating and shaking our house before daylight in the morning, 50 foot, right, our, our house is close to the road, right across the road from our house. Your semis came in and ran over our front yard and ran over our sprinkler heads and smashed our sprinkler heads such that we couldn't find them till the next spring. You rattled the pipes in our house, you rattled the plates in our house. Consequently, we put in, we put in complaints on those things. Consequently, at the same time, a leak developed from my well to my house in the area of my septic tank. Now, it was 11 degrees last December 15th when you started shaking my house. I developed a leak in the water coming from my house. I went out with a shovel got a dump truck load of sand, my kids were home, we went out and shoveled and found that our septic tank had settled, and now I can't say that the vibrating of our house, the shaking of the pipes in our wall, the rattling of our pitchers, the plates and cups in our cupboards shaking, and our house filled with vibration and noise, caused my lift station to settle and break my water supply to the house, but I can tell you, it hadn't happened in 16 years and it happened that night where I was out, my family was out, and it was 11 degrees. Our wells shut down, we're standing in water in our knee boots, digging, and what we find with the complaint resolution system is this doesn't count because the special land use only considered turbine operation, construction doesn't count. What happens from construction does not matter. I find that completely unacceptable, good neighbor. Then the next thing, you start testing the turbine. And in the middle of the night, we have a high-pitched squeal. Metal on metal squeal. I know what a bearing going out sounds like, a, a, drake, a brake pad dragging. I've worked on mechanical equipment, a high-pitched squeal. I fill out a complaint. Well, somebody, when they put the turbine together, they put parts together wrong, and there was a shroud rubbing on a piece of metal that rotates. And my complaint resolution or response was, this doesn't count, it's not during operation, it's not applicable, only things during operation are applicable. We probably would have found it during testing when there was a man there. Well, you decided to start out in testing these things in the middle of the night, 1,100 foot. Here's a picture of my house, guys. Here's a picture of my house, all right? And that's the turbine across the road from my house. This is my home. This is where I live. This is where my family sleeps. This is where the people that I love most in the world go to find sanctuary. This is my home. So the complaint, the response was, this is not applicable. It's during testing. Well, why didn't you have somebody out there during testing? Why didn't you test it during the day? Why didn't you have a man by these turbines when you started them up? Should my wife and I at 3 o'clock in the morning have to perform your testing procedures for you and it's not applicable? Really? Not applicable. It doesn't matter. It's not in the ordinance. Okay? All right. So then you start, then you start bombarding my house with noise. And I'm working out in the driveway, and I can feel the pressure in my ears just building during your testing, just building and building and building. 
to the point I was changing bearings on the disc in my driveway, to the point where I got nauseated. I, was, I had to stand up and take a break. I'm like, I can't, am I imagining this? You know, I don't know. And then Wendy and Ed that works for him stopped over to my house. And I didn't say anything. I just walked over. And they got out and they said, oh my God. They couldn't believe the noise. And I didn't say anything. And Wendy will tell you about it. And she, all of a sudden she started trying to pop her ears with her jaw pop her ears and she's like, I've got this pressure in my head that I can't get rid of. Well, I filled out a, a complaint on that and your standard complaint for noise and I have a sound meter about the same sound meter. I don't fill out complaints when the noise is normal. I fill out complaints when the noise is not normal. And every time I fill out a complaint on noise, when I believe you are exceeding the ordinance, your response to me is not applicable. You say that 45 decibels has to be over and above background, over and above ambient, over and above other conditions, and you need to have 45 decibels of contributing wind turbine noise over everything else. That is completely wrong. That's not how the ordinance is written. If you have something out there that's 25 decibels and you have something that is 45 decibels, it's going to be at 45 decibels. It's not going to be at 70 decibels. It's going to be over 45, at 45 decibels if you're making 45 decibels of noise. You're the ones responsible for it. And when I complain about noise, all I get is not applicable. So now the flicker. I'm going to go on a little bit about the flicker. From the day one, as um, a member of the commission said, we knew the flicker data was flawed. Okay, and I appreciate you honoring the fact that that we did uh, record flicker at our house at 5,400 feet. However, you know when I brought that forward, you asked if I could bring, if I could make copies of, if I could make copies of the the videos that I filmed, and I did that for you. I refiled, I refiled the complaint form. Karen went to Staples. We bought a, we bought a memory stick. We put it in a package. We wrote the letter. We put it in the mail, and and I went out of my way to, to make a copy of it, to go buy a memory stick, to put it in a package, to send it to you, to in hopes of cooperation. Right? Do you know what I got for a response? Not applicable. Not applicable. Not, Mr. Schindeldecker, thank you for bringing this forward. We appreciate you bringing it forward and being part of, the, part of the team to solve problems here. Not applicable doesn't count. Well then, so I started recording Flickr when the, when the project started because we were getting as over an hour a day of Flickr from the three turbines that were close enough to be on the Flickr study. And I, I put in a complaint and told you about it, and again, not applicable. Among other things that the complainant alleges, but does not allege that we are going to exceed, or are exceeding the 10 hours. Well, if you, your turbines wouldn't have shut down for icing conditions, you'd have been over 10 hours on my house. And but they shut down for the icing conditions, which saved you because I'm at 9.4 hours, and that's only when I've been home to record it, and some days is only nine minutes. So with my spreadsheet and my film that I filmed every day of Flickr on my house, I FOIA'd RMT's information for my home, which I think should be made to public to every person that is impacted by Flickr, so we don't have to guess when we're going to have Flickr, because you guys already know it within pretty good reason. However, you deduced somehow that I was going to have 6.8 hours of flicker on my home. Worst case ever, these good people sitting here heard RMT's consultant say, worst case ever, we're so conservative, it's never going to happen for years. This is the worst case, it's not going to happen. You know how long it took 
28 days, and I was over your 6.8 eight hours, worst case yearly ever going to happen. Now, your worst case yearly ever going to happen in my lifetime living in this residence is six is 28 days to get what you say will likely never happen. Really? Now that's a study you paid money for. Something's wrong with that. We knew it in the beginning. When I try to work with you, you say not applicable. You diminish anything that is said. So now I'll go on to the ice mitigation. The ice mitigation system, I've worked in engineering and design for 22 years. I own a, a design firm. I have engineers and designers that work for me, and we design process in chemical plants, manufacturing facilities, paper mills, and power plants. When you said you were going to have one instrument on each tower, I recommend that you had redundant instruments. That way, if, you, if both of your instruments are reading the same thing, you have redundancy built in, so if they're not reading the same thing, you can identify that something wrong. Could be wrong in the communication. They're called critical instruments for, for an operation like this. You have independent instruments and you have independent wiring running down. So if there is a communication problem like you had, you would identify. But, and I also said specifically in the ICE mitigation uh, presentation, I said I talked to residents in wind farm after wind farm and they say the worst sound conditions you'll get out of wind turbines is during icing conditions. And what did you say? You said that will not be a problem. Icing, icing conditions will never happen because we've got this system. Well, that's all good and fine, but after you ran the turbines all night long, building up with ice, as much as three quarters of an inch of ice, as soon as you shut them down and they started to flex naturally, as you say, I, I looked over just after daylight and the ice started falling off the turbines. I have permission on my neighbor's property because we, they use my property for farming, they farm apples off. And I went off, and just after you shut them down, three quarters of an inch of ice was on those turbines and allowed to run all night and keep my family up all night. Now, between the sound and the vibrations and the flicker and the ice and the busted pipelines and our sprinklers and not applicable, not applicable, not applicable, not applicable, not approaching us, not contacting us, simply saying not applicable to everything in our lives. Every time you negatively affect my home, my family, I report that to you. I am not lying. I am being 100% honest. You give me not applicable. And then you have on the bottom of your response, and on every response, this. And I want to read it. All I have to do is find it. Consumers Energy regrets any inconvenience that the Lake Winds Energy Park testing activity and operation has caused Mr. Schindeldecker, and we continue to make every effort reasonable to minimize impacts. You, when it comes to impacts on my dogs who are shaking their heads continually now, because I think since I have pressure in my ears and headaches, I believe my dogs are. I have six dogs. It's not just one dog that's doing it. Six dogs are shaking their heads, shaking their heads, shaking their heads. I talk to my vet, and he says, if you feel the pressure and you have headaches, your dogs are probably feeling the pressure too. But between my headaches, my sleep disturbance, um, waking up with my pulse out of a dead sleep at 130, now moved our bed to the basement in the storage room, 
after living in my home for 18 years, living in my basement in a storage room on an air mattress so I could try to sleep, so my lovely wife can get up and go try to teach second graders and be awake in the morning. I understand you're starting a new facility up, but you have to realize this new facility is in my bedroom. It's in my bedroom. It's not, it's not in a consumer's energy coal burning plant that you're putting in a new dust collection system and you have a few glitches. It's in my bedroom. It's in my bedroom at night. We have been up multiple, multiple nights and cannot sleep. I've, wanted, I've missed work because of this. Our health is suffering. Karen just went to the dentist because her, she says, I'm clenching my teeth. I, for some reason, I'm clenching my teeth. I have to be clenching my teeth. My teeth hurt. She went to Dan King. He, he just fitted her for a bite plant. Her four upper teeth in her mouth are loose. Loose. Her teeth are loose from clenching them at night when the low frequency is going through our house and vibrating our bodies. What is your response to those complaints that we have? Not applicable, the special land use and Mason County zoning ordinance says nothing about impacts on animals or humans. You can call yourself a good neighbor. You can say, well, we're running through some bugs. These are our lives you're running through bugs with. And if I impacted your life in your home, in your bed, in your sleep, in your family, the way you're impacting my life, you would justifiably take action. It's unacceptable. Your answers, your approach are unacceptable. And I, yeah, that's all I can tell you right now.